Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Piotr Modelski. I come from uh, Poznan University of Life Sciences from Poland. And I have a pleasure to uh, present the material that is linked to climate changes, but is uh, very practically oriented. And the, the main topic of uh, this presentation is solving challenges of timber volume measurement from post wind throw stands. I would like to make a little bit of a um, background of the importance of the forest based sector in Poland, uh, especially considering furniture export, the value of furniture export. Poland, Poland is the fourth country in the world with the value of this uh, export, and uh, in European conditions, uh, we compete with uh, Germany and Italy, uh, while the uh, top position in in terms of uh, furniture export, we can guess is China at the moment. It's also um, Poland has a potential in terms of uh, uh, forestry itself. Uh, we have, let's say, more uh, similar to all the countries in Central Europe conditions in terms of uh, timber production, which at the moment is average is 275 cubic meters per hectare. The average age is nearly 60 years. And uh, I think an interesting or important feature of Polish forestry is that 80% uh, is uh, managed by the state forests. Uh, altogether, uh, that uh, a state forest area is about 7 million hectares, and uh, it is harvested per year around 40 million cubic meters, which makes Poland uh, quite competitive, uh, important partner in the forest-based sector in Europe. The forest cover is 29.4%. There is also an aim of uh, enlarging that forest cover to 33%. That should take place in about 30 years, so we can have an um, average to Europe forest cover also in Poland. A few words about the uh, timber harvest in, uh, in the last uh, three decades. Uh, I want to focus that this uh, timber harvesting is growing, more or less constantly in the last 30 years. Uh, the moment uh, is about 40 million cubic meters, while in the 90s, beginning of 90s, it was around 20 or less than 20 million cubic meters a year. It comes not from intensive harvesting in the forest. It is a result of, uh, of a good forest management, of uh, changes in age classes, and the productivity of forest uh, per hectare, and also because of uh, afforestation, which took place in, also in the last 30 years. Um, yes, uh, the very important uh, and uh, a bit surprising event which took place in 2017 uh, linked to let's say an uh, issue of climate change it was a big wind throw uh, we observed it in august uh, three years ago and the result was very severe uh, i would like to say a couple of words from the meteorological point of view uh, the storm was moving from uh, southwest poland towards uh, north northwest Poland and the highest speed of the storm was 100 more than 150 kilometers an hour. Uh, it impacted the forestry quite severely. 40,000 hectares of forest was damaged and there were also uh, uh, different damages observed uh, to private households. And uh, in terms of forestry, or still maybe the link between forestry and meteorological issues, it was recognized as a, a so-called storm system term eco, as structured as a bow eco. We could see this bow moving from uh, south to north, and the forest area affected, we can see on the picture on the right, on the left of the map of Poland, this is a fragment, from this, uh, let's say, central uh, west part of Poland. And the darker the part, the uh, more severe damage was observed. 
it was observed on the length of more than 460 kilometers. And as I mentioned, the total area was uh, 40,000 hectares. How much timber was damaged? It was uh, initially um, uh, estimated that about 10 million cubic meters was affected badly. And uh, of course, this kind of uh, situation um, brings a challenge for practice and for foresters. Uh, there are many challenges that, of course, one of them, the earliest one is to clean up the area, to make the timber useful for timber industry, not to lose the value of a timber, but also after uh, to uh, provide a proper reforestation of the area. Uh, so basically speaking, we have a large amount of timber that is available in a relatively short time. It was planned that the harvesting should be done within one and a half years. And that was also a challenge for practitioners. Uh, at this point and in this presentation, I would like to focus on the challenges that were linked to the large amount of timber being available and the aspect of a measurement of accurate measurement of timber so it could be ready for timber industry could be ready for selling so yes there was a large amount of timber along the roads uh, it was coming from different forest compartments from different uh, forest enterprises there were around 200 harvesters involved in uh, harvesting, not only from Poland, also from neighboring countries, Baltic countries. And the, the owner was one, the state forest. And the idea was to uh, find a solution for the quick timber measurement. And uh, the, the, the timber was um, stuck along the roads. You can see also a bigger picture on that. So the, there was a need of a solution. So the, after the recognition of market, uh, it was decided that a useful, uh, useful tool will, will be a photo-optical system. Uh, this photo-optical system was based on uh, two cameras and a device that was mounted on the roof of the car. Uh, some of the description says it looked like a Google um, mapping process. Yes, similar, except it's a map of timber being uh, in pines along the roads. And the, the, the idea of this presentation is to show you a little bit of a, a scientific uh, approach towards that device to find out how exact measurements it can give, if it's a trustful uh, for the practice. But there's also a little bit uh, off story in this presentation. Uh, I will also present the information how much timber it was declassified as a fuel timber or biomass uh, wood used basically for, for um, energy purposes, which could be in a normal forest, which is not damaged, used as industrial timber. So we were interested what the changes in uh, timber classifying we can observe when we have uh, post wind throws done. So uh, how, how was our accuracy test done? We made the measurements with the same system three times of the same wood pile according to the procedure. Then we got results. We had the average volume of timber on the bark we got was 13.18 cubic meters on the bark and the value uh, of volume which was uh, received from the system was as follow 13.42 13.18 and 12.95 95 cubic meters on the bark and uh, looking at the differences from the average uh, discovered that the measurements is between minus 2% to plus 2% from the average value, which was exactly from my, or minus 177 to plus 1.8% from the average value. 
uh, we were trying to find out in one of the forest district, by forest district, I mean area about uh, 20,000 hectares, how is the, how it's, uh, what distribution of assortments we can get with a particular focus on the fuel wood. So uh, what we considered that um, extra fuel wood or extra biomass, it was the ends of the, of the timber that was uh, broken, that couldn't make any industrial assortment. And uh, also there were some parts of a uh, timber that were left with the root. They had to be cut by harvester, uh, let's say much further than from the uh, root collar section up on the trunk because harvester had was not able to cut, cut it directly to the uh, root because of a risk of damage of a harvester had chainsaw. So because it was left with a, around one meter of timber with a, a root in the forest, it was also recognized as a loss of timber, as in the loss of industrial timber that was uh, moved to the volume of uh, pure wood or biomass. So uh, once we have finished that um, expert uh, opinion or calculation, comparing how it uh, reacted to uh, standing forest, we recognized that it was up to 8% of timber. Extra timber was um, harvested as uh, fuel wood and biomass. So uh, the concluding remarks, Basically speaking, in the situation like a wind throw, it's a very useful tool uh, to have is the uh, photo-optical system for timber scaling. In this uh, short study, we recognize that gives um, uh, satisfactory volume uh, data that is from uh, plus 2% to minus 2% as results from the average volume we calculated. And the second information I could share with you is that about 8% of timber from the regular forest uh, damaged by the wind will create, a, will create um, as a, a fuel wood. And so basically speaking, we can say that the, uh, the climate change understood as a violent um, weather condition conditions creates more fuel wood, which is renewable energy for our use. Thank you very much. I'm open for questions. Thank you, Piotr. Uh, welcome to Riga for a while. Uh, question about uh, today and uh, about some history. Few years ago we heard a lot, we read a lot about activities uh, in and around Belovezha forest in Poland. What about situation today and what about forest management in Belovezha forest exactly? Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you, Paul, for inviting me to the conference. Thank you for including me uh, to the group of speakers. Um, yes, the, the, the question about, about Białowieża Forest uh, uh, is a good question, first of all. I think uh, at the moment the situation is very stabilized, it's balanced. I think the compromise was reached between some uh, harvesting in the area and uh, I mean, some harvesting being carried out and um, yeah, leaving some areas for natural recovery. However, uh, I think a couple of sentences before I should say that when we talk about Białowieża forest, we should understand the division of the area. Uh, I mean, we have in that area, which is about 60,000 hectares, a national park, um, Białowieża National Park, which is about um, 10,000 hectares, and the surrounding area of nearly 50,000 hectares that is under management of the state forests. And we're talking about the area 
that is a regular managed forest that uh, there it's supposed to be a disagreement between um, ecological ideas of um, managing this forest and more practical more down to earth um, ideas of manage of managing of this forest so this is this is what i would like to have a clear, clear view on that that the biovisa forest is not area that is protected the biovisa forest consists of national park and this is a different story under different management and the state forest area which is a normal managed forest That's it. Thank you. I uh, hope to see you one day in Riga in reality again. Thank you.